In each adventurer dwells a desire to connect with something beyond themselves. They will travel halfway around the world and endure great sacrifice until they discover that special path that will lead them to the temple, shrine, or the back country. Born in Edmonton in 1947 to Don and Peggy Forrest, Kathy Calvert grew up fully embracing her father's passion for the outdoors and mountaineering. At a very early age, Kathy would excel at hunting, fishing, camping, and horseback riding. Later in life, Kathy would become a trailblazer in a series of female firsts. She was a member of the first women's expedition to Mount Logan, as well as the first women's ski traverse of the Bugaboos to Rogers Pass. One of her greatest life adventures would be found in the Warden Service. In 1973, Kathy was hired as one of the first female wardens in the mountain parks. I was looking for a summer job, and uh, at that time I think I'd just about finished my degree in biology, so we're always looking for summer jobs, summer work. And um, I got a phone call from Tim Modger, because apparently the uh, government had uh, decided they had to implement this affirmative action, so now they had to hire women, and they, they realized that there was no women in the world. They didn't hire women for the warden service. It was just considered not done. Kathy's outstanding outdoor skills made her one of the best at her job during her 25 years in the warden service. While stationed in Yoho National Park, Kathy led the public safety program. What I liked about Yoho so much was that because you were a journalist, you never knew what was going to happen on any particular day. You could go, get to work and uh, there might be a fire you'd have to go fight, or there might be a really nasty car accident you had to deal with, or bears. You were always, you know, we were dealing with bears. and. Um, uh, going into uh, Lake O'Hara one time when they had a bear mauling and, and the closures that we had and I remember just wandering around in, in the fog and the snow with these guns you know wondering if we're gonna run across this female bear and her cubs <laughs> so it was so it was challenging because it threw something at you that was totally different every day and um, there wasn't an awful lot of desk work Kathy's outstanding outdoor skills made her one of the best at her job during her 25 years in the warden service. While stationed in Yoho National Park, Kathy led the public safety program. So the best thing I ever did. I don't regret ever not having joined the warden service because it led to things that I would never possibly have done. The wonderful trips in the wilderness, the climbs, the com camaraderie, the, the friendships that you make. Then I was called upon to get to Liverpool, to uh, be ready to leave Liverpool to go over to uh, uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia, and uh, together with uh, thousands of other war brides. And I was on the ship Letitia, mm -hmm. and uh, it took ten days on the ship because they were still worried about torpedoes and, and bombs or whatever. In 1946, Dorothy Carlton, a war bride from the distant city of Reading, England, arrived at the door of her primitive one-room cabin with her warden husband, Ed Carlton, and their three-month-old baby. Little did she know that she was on the path of an adventure that would change her life forever. He was so happy, helped me out of this big truck, and he said, well, this is it, this is our home. I said, Ed, you've got to be kidding. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I, could, I couldn't believe it. It looked like a storage shed or something like that. Yeah. It was quite a challenge for me, coming from a big city in England. And uh, no, no facilities, no, no electricity. Water from the creek. It took love, strength of character, and a good sense of humor to stand by your man if you married a National Park warden, especially in the early days. Not only did these wives care for their families, homeschool their children, pack horses, but they also cooked and cared for firefighting crews. These were the bunk beds that I was introduced to at Bow Summit. Um, you know, that was quite an eye-opener too. And then there was a, a government mattress on top of each of those, of course. And then one of those, or maybe a couple of those gray blankets, very itchy blankets, I might say. <sighs> Often isolated from friends and civilization for most of the year, 
It's little wonder that loneliness was the single most difficult thing that many warden's wives had to learn to cope with. Dorothy adjusted to the lonely life of a warden's wife with creativity, inner strength, and a spirit of adventure. Still active at 91, Dorothy is always ready with a smile and a song, a constant inspiration. When you're smiling, when you're smiling, the whole world smiles with you. When you're laughing, when you're laughing, the sun comes shining through. But when you're crying, you bring on the rain, so stop your crying. Be happy again, keep on smiling, cause when you're smiling, the whole world smiles with you. Yes, it does.